But we begin tonight with a really big, really important brainstorming session. We cannot hang back and hope for the best when we've seen the kinds of job losses that we've seen over the last year. President Obama invited 130 executives, labor leaders, economists, and small business owners all to the White House today to try to tackle the country's worst unemployment crisis since the Reagan years. This is not just one of a series of wonky little policy initiatives on the Obama administration's agenda. This is a front-of-the-line, huge deal, dwarfs all other domestic issues problem that has the power to not only sink the next elections for the president's party, but potentially to sink a presidency. It also, frankly, has the potential to change the character of our country. Financial watchdog Elizabeth Warren is now warning about the prospect of an America without a middle class. It is a really big problem, and it's one that's going to take a really big solution, a massive jobs initiative. Nobel Prize-winning economist Paul Krugman this week sounding the alarm on what he calls a social and economic emergency. Mr. Krugman noting that state and local governments are going broke because they're taking in less taxes, and they often can't legally run deficits. To keep them from laying off hundreds of thousands of workers, Krugman is recommending direct federal aid to states and local governments, and a lot of it. He's also calling for at least a small-scale version, he says, of the New Deal's Works Progress Administration to put people to work directly at public service jobs. He's also calling for federal incentives for businesses that hire new workers, literally paying companies if they hire people. A version of that, uh, paying companies not to fire people in the first place, really helped blunt unemployment in Germany. Now, None of this would be cheap. These are not shy little tinkering ideas. But this is not a shy little tinkering unemployment crisis. This is huge. There are six people looking for a job for every job that's out there. Six people looking for a job for every single job. A third of our fellow Americans who are unemployed right now have been unemployed for more than six months. This is not an economy that needs little one-yard gains, little quarterback sneaks. We need yardage. We need to make up a lot of ground and fast. Long bombs, end-arounds that get us near the goal line. 75-yard punt returns for touchdowns. And as the White House tries to put those kinds of big plays together, they do have one little bit of good political news to bask in. There is apparently no real defense on this subject coming from the other political team. If Democrats need to do something big on the economy, they can take comfort in, at least so far, Republicans offering only totally random alternative ideas. On the occasion of the President's Job Summit today, both the current House Republican leader, John Boehner, and the former leader, Newt Gingrich, held their own shadow jobs summits. John Boehner's featured the architect of the fiscally disastrous Bush tax cuts and a former economic advisor to John McCain. That advisor is most famous for having written a book 10 years ago called Dow 36,000. Yeah, remember when the Dow hit 36,000? No, you don't. House Minority Whip Eric Cantor is also pushing his own economic recovery plan. Hint, hint, tax cuts, spending freeze. And Mitt Romney, remember him? Mitt Romney, of all people, unveiled his 10-point jobs plan in an op-ed in USA Today. Romney bravely calls for extending those fiscally disastrous Bush tax cuts. He calls for investing in nuclear power plants. And he calls for stopping any pesky limits on CEO pay for bailed-out companies. Mitt Romney also thinks we need to make sure there's not too much red tape in the financial sector. Because if there's one thing we learned in this financial crisis this past year, it's that Wall Street needs to be let loose a little more. And the CEOs of companies that imploded, they frankly need to get paid a little better. See you in 2012, Mr. Romney. Joining us now is Congressman Peter DeFazio, Democrat of Oregon. Congressman DeFazio, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Really appreciate it. Uh, Rachel, it would be funny if we weren't in so much trouble. I know. Well, let me ask you about the premise as I see it here. I think that Democrats, that we as a country, need to do something big, that there's going to actually need to be some pretty big government action to tackle unemployment this big. Do you think that's true? 
Uh, absolutely. I remember the uh, so-called stimulus, which I was one of the few Democrats to vote against last spring. Uh, the, it ditched a bunch of investment in uh, infrastructure uh, and other uh, concrete improvements, school construction and other things in favor of yet another dose of tax cuts to get three Republican Senate votes. I'm hoping the Obama administration has moved beyond that now and realizes that we aren't going to hear anything from that side that's meaningful, nothing that's going to put people back to work. What good's a tax cut when you're unemployed? Uh, and, uh, and begin to invest in some of the basics. So we have a plan uh, to begin to catch up with our infrastructure deficit in this country. Uh, we just got great numbers uh, from the, uh, uh, a couple of uh, national groups, uh, both on transit and highway and bridge infrastructure. And we could productively invest within 120 days $79 billion, creating over 2 million construction jobs, associated jobs in engineering and other fields, and about 400,000 manufacturing jobs uh, producing transit vehicles, parts for that, uh, and control systems and all those sorts of things. That's just a start, but that would put a foundation underneath a long-term productive recovery for this country. Well, as you said, you voted against the stimulus bill in part, as I understand it, because that infrastructure spending got dropped. When you talk about something with, 100, with 120 days horizon, spending $80 billion to save or create 2.4 million jobs, those sound like very, very rich numbers in terms of the effectiveness of government spending and what we need to do in terms of jobs. What do you think the political prospects are for getting something like that passed? Well, it, it seems maybe even Larry Summers is coming around. We've discussed him before and his reluctance to invest in infrastructure. And he was a key architect of the tax cuts in the Lars bill and the cuts in the infrastructure because he thought it wouldn't spend out. Four percent of the money spent out of that so-called stimulus has produced 25 percent of the jobs, and that was transportation infrastructure. Real jobs, measurable jobs. We can tell you where every single one was, how many hours the people worked, unlike a lot of the other things which haven't even begun to produce jobs. Well, on, on that subject, there, uh, in talking about the Republican uh, counter proposals thus far, and I, I think it's important in order to understand what kind of op political opposition uh, job creation proposals are going to, to, to face. The one thing that Republicans do all seem to agree on is this talking point that the stimulus has been a huge failure. We a, a brief summary of that right here to listen to. They've got a, a stimulus bill that's not working. Of course, it's failed. To do so would acknowledge the failure of the stimulus bill passed in January. Their stimulus didn't work. Their stimulus didn't work. That's the one talking point that all of these different Republicans agree on. Didn't the CBO just say that stimulus really has worked? Uh, that which was spent on transportation infrastructure, real investments, has produced quite a few jobs. Uh, the jobs we saved in public education and in the states, in, in critical public services, police, fire, uh, all those things have worked. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's a lot that has yet to happen. Some of the green job stuff has gone awry in terms of wind power, where uh, most of the manufacturing jobs for the wind turbines have gone to China. Mm. We need stronger Buy America provisions in any subsequent uh, bills that are aimed at an American jobs recovery, not a Chinese jobs recovery. A lot of people are going to be looking to you for leadership, I think, and guidance and actually explanatory power on uh, following the infrastructure uh, focus for this next undoubted round of spending. I do have one last question for you, Congressman. Um, Oregon or Oregon State? <laughs> I wanted to wear my uh, O hat in here. I'm, I'm a duck. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I'm headed there right now. I, to, know I mean, not are. to the game, but to a place to watch it. I know, and I realize it was a big sacrifice to spend this time not watching the game. So thank you very much. Go Ducks. Go Ducks. <laughs> Appreciate it. Congressman Peter DeFazio of Oregon. Okay.